Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and today I'm back out on the Legal Limit Sport Fishing Boat with my buddies Captain Joe and Captain John. We're headed out of the Berkeley Marina today in search of rockfish, halibut, and stripers. Today we're going to be drifting live bait on three-way rigs, so the first thing we had to do is head across the bay and go grab us some live anchovies. Right on, brother. You have a good one. From there, we decided to head out just past the gate in search of rockfish, which it didn't take very long at all. We were hooked up into black rockfish, blue rockfish, you name it, ling cod. It was on fire. Rockfish, open day. Have a trouble. Hooked up. Hooked up. Hooked up. Hooked up. Oh, popped off, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Came off. Thick, uh. Well, they might be too thick for pit catch. They're, they're thick, dude. Oh, they're so thick, I can catch them. I got 20 bucks for the first person to catch a cab. Every draw. You gotta come out and get some of these. You're doing a hell of a job of skippering this boat, Joe. Oh yeah, and a little bit of breakfast. <laughs> it's a birdie. Nice. What is that one, Bubs? Huh? What is this, Bubs? Uh, what is that? That's a keeper though, I've never seen that wow, one. I've never seen this. It's a Jamaican bobsled. Oh, Jamaican bobsled, he came over on the yin yang. <laughs> Got there, John. Another little blue rockfish, black. That's gonna be good eating. Sorry, there. That is good. Damn! That's what I thought I had a minute ago. All right. Keeper? That's Come Keeper. On, keeper. Yeah! First one of the year on the green legal limit. Legal limit. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Weldcraft, Low and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. Try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. 
Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if sent ya. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong, abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch, super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, Beeline's got it covered. To find out more, visit Beeline.com. Beeline, baby! Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Thanks for watching. Now let's get back to the ship. Oh, we gotta be 22. That's 22. I'm tossing this back. That's too short. Yeah. Now making a run. Oh, it's another nice. Oh, quality job. There we go. Yeah. There we go, baby. Yeah. On fire. Yes. There you go. A little bit over, about four right inches over. That's better. Sure, that's good. Yep, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Another taco. Well, we got some fish right now on the peat line laser minnow in a sardine color. A little rock cod. Put it back in. I'm not sure. Nope. Good rock fish though. But he hit like a wing. Amazon? Amazon. Hey! Too small though, huh? Yeah. This cool. cab gotta be 16 inches. Oh. Little cap zone. <laughs> On a P-line. Laser minnow again, guys. Out here whacking them. Yeah, like the, a 10 or a 12, is that what we use for the Yeah. Yeah, I'll upload a little boat. Come over here. They don't count toward your tin, do they? No. No, I get two of those. Yeah. Sweet. You want to tag that one? That's number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 22 on the money. A little bit, a little bit more. Control yourself. Try to pull your fish off. Close. Keep it laying. Rock nice rock so after hammering out easy limits of rockfish, we decided to make our way over to the flats in search of some halibut. But after burning our wheels there for a go. couple hours and only coming up with these two short fish, there. we decided it was in our best interest to pick up at that point and search out active stripers, which Joe and John already knew were there. We're in the brothers area and I'm putting on an anchovy right now. Right best is not, try not to touch as much. I'm getting a two watt owner. Going through. Underneath the mouth, out the snout. Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! Fish on! I got it, bud. It's a shit. Oh, that's a good two pounder. Three pounds. Also, selling this other fish. Deeper. Deeper. Gotta get him out of the net. Yep. Go over. Here we go, baby. Take a line. Keep or something. Yeah. Yeah. The striper. That's what it is. Ain't no helmet. I don't think you run it out there. Take a line. Yeah. I knew we had a chaser. It's too much fun on the legal limit every time. I have too much damn fun out here. Go ahead and take this. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> All right. Put you over. Oh, look at that runner. Hey, bub, why don't you take that net upside the head with the antenna? Look, <laughs> right. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
Not enough. You're right. Right. About eight. Oh yeah. There you go. You're free. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Right. There we go. So after making a few drifts in and around the Brothers Islands, our bite seemed to fade after those first couple of stripers. So the guy said, let's hop over to this hump where the stripers got the bait fish peg, and it didn't take us very long to start hooking up. I know I had a tight to drag. It was like, wasn't even doing anything. I'm in. Came off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, came off. It's going this way. Let me follow my fish. Oh. I'm in front of you. Just keep it in there. Just keep it in there. Go over. Go over. Go. Oh. Like a freaking thing, Hal. Yeah, isn't it? Oh yeah, huge Hal, but all. to humiliate the person holding the net and blame them as loud as possible even if they've had no chance at landing that fish. Remember, it's always the person holding the net's fault if the fish comes off. So after this last fish, we were all running a little bit short on time, so we decided to head back in, get our fish cleaned up, and break down some instructional for you guys. All right, now for today's fishing, we're drifting live anchovies. This was for halibut. This is for the rockfish, for the striper, striper. and we're all using this. We're basically using the same rig for all this, right, Jeff? Yeah, correct. Nice. So what we're doing here is we're using a swivel tied to a three-way with the dropper. Big snap swivel. Yeah, big snap swivel. You don't have to. You could tie it straight to the uh, three-way. Mm -hmm. This just uh, makes it a little bit easier for yeah. taking it off and moving around That's without correct. a bunch of weights clinging around. Yeah, and you could do a dropper from anywhere from uh, six to twelve inches. And we got another little snap right here. Uh, take the weight off and on. So the the shorter the dropper, the uh, less the size of the snag so smaller snags the shorter the dropper what's the advantage for this short dropper over a long dropper oh uh, you know what i i believe it's just for preference you know just for preference just for preference yeah so what when you look at joe's dropper right here see that's what's holding up so a lot of the time you're going to see us in the film lifting up and down on the rod we're touching the bottom and we can feel that there's a contour change on the bottom what that does is it allows us to lift it up and down so our bait can still clear that snag that's correct yeah so go ahead and keep on going yeah. there for jeff and what we're using here is we got about a five foot leader. 
and we like to use the perfection knot so it gives your bait more of a live action. I think um, a lot of a lot of people don't know what a perfection knot yeah. is. Yeah, why don't you hold that up right here so they can see that and explain why. Well, you can see the perfection knot's got a loop that's tied to the hook. So the hook's able to move around on the line and it gives that fish uh, move, uh, how do you say it? For the, so the fish will be able to move around and swim without it being direct tied to the line so it would be pretty much still. So no resistance. So no resistance. The there you go. You get a lot better yeah. natural motion yeah, of that fish. It, it has to be like this. If you were to tie a straight one on there yeah. and um, it would kind of make the this, fish robotic. Huh? It would, you know, then yeah. the fish, you know, then a lot of times the hook turns and it gets the fish in the side. Yeah. I would imagine your bait's actually a hell of a lot more lively that way and lasts longer too because it's less fatigue for him. Yeah. Yeah. True. They don't have to fight the whole leader. Yeah. Now, what what type of line are you using here for your leader? Uh, this is 30 pound fluorocarbon. 30 pounds. Yeah, we, you know, we stick with P line. Um, it's, it's a very good line. And, you know, and on your weight selections, we use all torpedoes. We don't go with. You know, we see a lot of the other guys using ball weights or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we like the torpedoes, so we stick with those. The for... torpedo seems to be a lot more snag-proof. It seems to make it through things a little easier. Yeah, it, it drags off of stuff, yeah. but, you know, when your weights vary, you know, we we could have been fishing with 1s today, and we could have went up to 16s today. Yeah. So it just, it just depends on, uh, you know, where we're fishing, the depth, the current. You know, I think a lot of people, too, think fluorocarbon's just for invisibility. Well, the fact of the matter is fluorocarbon has very low stretch, so a lot of the time when you have a weight that's fixed like this without a slider, a lot of the time that very low stretch in this small hook, you're going to see Joe tell me, and I even set the hook too hard on a halibut, just lift up into him. You have low stretch, little tiny sharp hook. What's that, a 2 watt? That's a 2 watt. Yeah, 2 watt uh, owner hook. 2 watt owner hook right there. Mm -hmm. That's a mosquito style, the eye leaning back mm -hmm. right there. What that's going to do with this less stretch is help that hook penetrate them that's a lot better. And fluorocarbon's extremely dense. And you've seen us fishing around those rocks for those mm -hmm. rockfish. Fluorocarbon's abrasion value is very good versus mm -hmm. like a nylon Correct. based line, which can fray a heck of a lot easier. Yeah, that's that's another reason we use it too. Awesome. You know, for the abrasion, there's a lot of rocks, mm -hmm. um, so this it actually works perfect for us. But you know, a lot of people rig up anchovies, or you could use this for anchovies, shiners, um, shad. You know, shad. I mean, we do a lot of mud shad fishing. Mud suckers. We do a lot of mud suckers <laughs> out here in the bay when there's no live bait out here mm. in the early months yeah you know we will go to mud suckers or uh you know either shiners shiners work really good out here awesome. matter of fact they sell them right up at the bait shop but um here let me rig one of these up for you real quick so right. i can show the people go ahead and hold it right there so what i'm gonna do here is show you guys the way to rig the bait so you got your hook scoop out a live anchovy or preferably a live one yeah <laughs> what you do is you try to try not to touch the fish as much as possible um, you take the scales off you know it tears the fish up right here on the back part of the fish or, you know the bottom part you know is their mouth they open pretty wide so you want to take this hook and go through the bottom of their jaw and go straight through the nose of the fish so it's dangling like that and that's hitting way less vitals than any other way yeah, of rigging this yeah thing. and it'll stay alive you know for quite some time you know and all you do is drift it like that keep them fresh you know, keep them fresh your bites will continue to, you know, to happen if you keep fresh bait. If, if your bait comes in, a lot of times you'll see it like this. Let's see if I can break this up. Put the mouth of the fish open. The fish is still alive, but what happens is when it's going through the water, the water gets in here and blows the fish's mouth up. So then the fish dies pretty quick doing it that way. So if your bait comes in and is tore up like that, you know, we just Toss throw it out, grab another one. one. Correct miss my opportunity to eat that fish yeah oh don't worry bro I got more <laughs> <laughs> so now for your rockfish that we're out here catching today we got a ling cod right here this happens to be a green ling a black rockfish right here Joe what are some of the most basic ways for guys to come out here and track down rockfish on their own without telling them anybody's secret spots a lot of these guys are really critical about their areas and you shouldn't ask these guys for their areas you should go find them on your own, being a good angler and knowing how to track them down. So what are some basic ways of finding rockfish out here? Uh, basically, you're looking for structure. The structure? You know, okay. Structure. So uh, big rock. rock structures, or I'm, I'm talking sand structures? No, no a sand. Shelf. It, no, it's it's all rocks. They're rockfish. They're rockfish. So, so they're living off, you know, rocky bottoms. Um, 
So the best place you're going to find them is around rocks. <laughs> so look for a big jagged rocky bottom? And yeah, you know, close to shores, you know. I mean, there's some locations where, you know, right outside the gates you can find them. Inside the gate you can find them around Alcatraz. Yeah. There's a bunch of rocks. If you can get close to it enough without being kicked out, yeah. you know. All you got to do is drop it down there. If you're feeling rocks when you're bouncing, mm -hmm. you know, there's bound to be some rock fish there. Yeah. But, you know, majority of the, all the rock now, fish is, that are is caught. Is there like a too far in the bay you don't find rock fish and or mm. is there like a certain distance you kind of have to go out further because i know yeah. when i fished in the south bay i would never stumble onto a rock fish. yeah no nah, you know any place any place i would say uh from alcatraz out to the ocean out okay. to the ocean is the best to go so that's where you're going to start finding your rock fish from that area up yeah and maybe a few back you'll but... find some you'll okay. find some quality fish you know in, in the in the main bay you so know, some basic alcatraz. tips big rock piles big rocky areas under the surface near the shore mm -hmm. uh, you're seeing we had to stay 75 yards off otherwise the coast guard was going to come after us yeah but the, so, big, the biggest thing is you yeah. got to know how to drift and drift gotta know the, how to drift. The, if there's no drift there's no current you're not going to catch fish so, so you need that current to drift you along for this technique your boat can't be in one spot it's got to drift awesome all right now for these stripers joe what did we specifically do today that was slightly different than the rockfish because i know you can stumble into stripers in rockfish areas but what was it about the timing today that you decided to target stripers instead of rockfish what was it that drove you to make that decision um the tide the tide yeah what is it about the tides that's so critical for stripers well it's the location where you're fishing basically mm -hmm. um you know, with the currents going and it being too fast at the peak tides, mm -hmm. there's some locations where your, your boat's going to drift too fast, you're not going to be able to catch the fish. So with the tide, the current, um, the current and the wind, and the location you're at, mm -hmm. is how you determine, you know, what, what spot you're going to fish and when you're going to fish it. So you know you've had success in this area with stripers before, yeah. but you know if the tide was wrong, you're going to be moving too through, through too quick or the wrong direction on it. Now, stripers are bait fish oriented. They, they want to follow the bait. So a lot of the time, you're not going to find stripers in the exact same place every time, right? No, they're moving around chasing bait. They're moving around chasing bait. If you find the bait, more than likely the stripers are eventually going to find them too. That's right. We you're went to a spot bait, where they've yeah. been a few weeks, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's been there actually. These fish have been biting for yeah. over a month actually. But it could easily be three days from now and they'll be gone. Yeah, they'll be gone. You know, so if you learn to pattern the bait fish, learn to follow the bait fish, look where those anchovies, sardines, herring are going, and more than likely you're gonna find stripers. You can find them on sand, sand bars, rocks, flats. Like any, and you can find them any place that you're, there's bait, basically. In, anywhere there's bait, stripers can be caught bait fishing. They can be caught on lures, swim baits, top water. Yeah. You name it, there's a million different ways to catch these guys. The most critical thing is that good moving water. Mm -hmm. They need a high oxygenated water, and they need the bait fish. Find the bait fish. Find that key structure and find these guys on the graph. And I'll even slap a picture up here for you guys of what stripers look like on the graph. So utilize that, find a good current, try it out, get some live bait down there. And live bait works incredibly good for stripers. If you can use live bait, use it. Yeah. What I would suggest is um, knowing your fish finder too. You got to know if your GPS is working correctly with the flow of the water. If you're if you're moving anywhere faster than 1.5 maybe, you're going too fast, the bait's gonna pass up your fish, and you're not gonna be able to get those hookups like you most likely wanting. So what we usually drift at is about, what is it about? I think it's one that we are doing all day today. It's like one to one three, I yeah. think that range around. If you around get right any there. slower, you keep your baits in front of them a little bit longer. So it's a good thing if you can go slower, if you right? You can go slower. But they do bite on that faster moving water. So they that, do, yeah. So you're thinking that golden rule area, that drift from one to one three, yeah. And one five kind of starting to get yeah. on the faster end. Yeah. All right, keep that in mind, guys. That's great advice right there for you. Because if you see Joe out there doing it, he's more than likely landing on that golden rule. Don't go following the guy around, though, because if I catch you, man, I'm going to knock you for it. Just yeah. kidding. But, you know, <laughs> if you're going out in your personal boat, you know, and you're looking for fish, you're having a hard time finding them, you know, there's, a, there's so many charter boats out there, you know. Yeah. Call up Joe. You guys can go out exactly like we did today. Joe or John, get out here. Have Joey clean your fish up for you. I'm done getting slimy today. Joey said he's going to clean them all up. So come on out here, guys. Meet Joe. Meet the rest of the crew. And come have a blast and whack fish just like this. There we go, guys. Another awesome day out on the legal limit. Yes, sir. Call these guys up. Phone number right here on the bottom. Hit me up, guys. Informativefisherman.com. 
Call these guys up, go whack them like we did. Thanks for watching. Woo! To a three-way. Three, a three what? Guys. <laughs> there was no penetration, man. Just, uh, get rubbing the outside. Go ahead. All right, we're in the brothers area. Three takes, show you All right, we're in the brothers area right now. And I'm <laughs>